Ali. I'm a specialist clinical respiratory physiologist at South Manchester University Hospitals. You need to be a real people person for this job. You need to be enthusiastic about what you're doing and you need to be very good at getting people on your side. That's what really stands out about this job um, compared to other similar jobs is that you need to be very good at communicating with people and getting them to do exactly what you want to do. You can come across quite demanding sometimes but um, getting patients on your side and making them relax is really important. I did A-levels in science subjects. I got pretty good grades, but you don't actually need to get top grades to get into this career. Um, so spirometry is the, the first one. We then perhaps do transfer test, which measures the quality of your lung tissue, how well, once you've got that air into your lungs, how well can it actually move across your lung tissue. There's some diseases which would cause your lung tissue to be thickened, so it would take longer for your oxygen to move across. Um, we then measure lung volumes, so how big in total are somebody's lungs. Even when you breathe out as much as you can, there's some air left in your lungs. That's known as residual volume. So some of our tests can, can measure that bit as well. That's important. Some diseases will give you extra big lungs. Sounds like a good thing. It isn't always a good thing. Other tests would give you, uh, other diseases would give you small lungs, so we might, might need to know about those. We'll do fitness to fly assessments to see whether people with lung pathology, how, whether they'd be able to fly um, in that there's less oxygen in a plane than there is at ground level. Um, we also do skin prick allergy tests and we do some quite complex exercise tests to assess people either pre-heart transplant or pre-thoracic surgery. So we're coming to another lab and we're going to record my VO2 max and I have to wear a rather uh, magnificent head unit that you can see here that Ellie's holding um, which has got the mouthpiece on that I'm going to have to breathe in and out. So it's going to basically measure my oxygen uptake and how much oxygen I'll use to see how fit I am. Uh, the VO2 max test is essentially a, in, a, in a healthy person a measurement of their fitness levels and with training we can get an improvement in VO2 max in respiratory patients so we like to measure VO2 max especially if patients are going uh, for surgery uh, we would need to know that they're going to survive surgery and by doing the, the, the VO2 test we can get an indication as to whether the patient will uh, do well after surgery or might need to, to go on to the intensive care unit which if possible we want to try and avoid. All right, come on Tom, this is where you've got to push yourself now. No slacking, keep those muscles going. Push on, keep it going. You're on the finishing straight now. So I just finished my VO2 max test uh, where I kind of increased the, the workload on the bike uh, so it got harder and harder. So my respiration went up, my heart rate went up, my oxygen demand went, went up, and the mouthpiece was recording kind of the levels of gases going in and out of my mouth and in my lungs to monitor how much oxygen I was using. So I'll look at the results in a minute to see what kind of results I've got, but that last minute was a, a killer. I've got some serious quad burn on the bike. Uh, so we're gonna have a look at what the results are right now. So the test I had performed collected lots of different results. And the main result we're looking at is the very top line where it says VO2 max in liters per minute. It predicted that I would have a VO2 max of 3.208 liters per minute, when in fact I actually got a value of 3.82 liters per minute. So what this means is at the end of that test when I was cycling really, really hard, I was actually using 3.82 liters of oxygen for every minute I was doing that test or that specific part of the test. Um, and to be an athlete, like a really good endurance athlete, you want this value to be as high as possible um, so your body can actually use as much oxygen as possible to keep you going in an endurance event. Yeah, so I started off with a BSc in physiology 
from Sheffield University. I then decided I wanted to do clinical physiology, so I had to transfer and do training on the job with a degree that's specialist for clinical respiratory physiology at Manchester Met. Because this career is quite hands-on, the training is in-house, so we train in the workplace and we have day release. We go to university one day a week, we, um, um, aim to study for a degree. I think the best part of the job is we meet so many people, wide variety of people. Um, part of the job is making them feel at ease so you can hear some interesting stories, so that's always nice. It's nice to know that you're involved with uh, patient care as well and you like it makes you feel like you've made a difference. The toughest part is when you're training trying to balance your university workload with work um, that's quite difficult. It's also quite tough in encouraging patients to get the best out of them that's really important in our role and that's what makes our role different to quite a lot of other jobs in hospital. We actually have to get the patients on our side and get them to give us their best efforts. In a training post, your starting salary would be around £16,500 a year. Once qualified, you'd be looking at £22,000 a year. At management level, it can range anything from about £40,000. And if you're one of the special few that get right to the top, it can be up to consultant level, over £90,000 a year.